My next guest is the host of a hot new podcast, The Dating After Divorce Survival Guide, providing its listeners with a path to emotional well-being and striking down misconceptions about divorce. He's personally survived divorce and has made it his mission to help others do the same. Eric Payne, welcome to the Shundria Show. How are you today? Eric Payne, welcome to the Shundria Show. How are you today? I'm doing very well. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. Well, let's dive on in. Um, you okay. have overcome some very difficult experiences yourself surrounding divorce. Um, what was your personal secret to bouncing back afterwards? Um, I think so. It was a, it was a slow but sure process. I'm not going to like act in any way, shape or form like it was easy. Um, I believe that the first and foremost thing that you have to do is accept. I think I was I think for me, once I learned how to accept the space that I was in and be grateful for the space that I was in, that's when life started to turn around and get better. But as long as I was wanting for what I used to have or afraid that I couldn't do moving forward, that's when I was having, that's when I was in trouble. <laughs> um, who helped you? Were, were there, were, did you have a support system of family or friends or faith, you know, that helped, you know, helped you through this recovery period? Did you say it was so, a whole process? Yeah, it was a combination. I think, um, I think there was, I had a group of mentors that I kind of assembled together, something in my spirit. And from a church service, I learned that, you know, you should have a council of elders like Solomon's, you know, council. So I put that together and it was a group of older men, a couple of older women, faith for sure. Um, I've always been a faithful individual growing up in, on the South side of Chicago. I'm a, I'm a Methodist. Um, and I think it was just one of those things where well, let me, I'm sorry, to directly answer your question. I had that group and then I had some friends that kind of like weren't as supportive. So the two were juxtaposed against against each other. Now they were all supportive, but I mean supportive like with advice that's helpful. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, in, in a sense, I guess also it's a journey you had to go through on your own, you know, in a Correct. lot of ways in terms Correct. of healing. And um, so it's one thing to overcome something challenging. We've all experienced our own sort of challenges, but there's something special about wanting to help others in a similar situation. So where does your affinity for helping other divorcees stem from? Okay. So when I was going through my challenges, because it, yes, I did get divorced, but there were a series of events that my divorce was mixed in the middle of. And I was, you know, it was one blow after another, after another, after another. And I have to be honest, kind of like any biblical story or any, you know, anti-hero hero story, it was suggested, oh, Eric, you know, it would be really great when you come out on the other side of this, if you could help people. My, my response to that was not positive at all. You know, I, my, my reaction was, I am not going through this for anyone else. This sucks. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, but I have this statement that let time have its way. Time passed. I got divorced in 2015. Around 2019, I was in a different space and I just felt compelled, like those words that have been poured into me about, you know, you should share your story as a storyteller. I think you'd have a great opinion, that kind of thing. And I think from a from a divine perspective, God wanted me to tell his story. And I, I, I had my ideas of stories that I wanted to tell, but this was put on me. This is my story. The things that happened to me in my life happened so that I could not claim that I did anything. You know what I mean? So um, with that said, I just moved into this space where it just made sense. Several people had made subtle suggestions along the way. And then when it finally came down to it, I said, you know, I think I can do this because I moved from a place where I was angry and bitter and possibly manifestoing, if you will, about, you know, these things, men versus women and divorce and all that stuff to a place where I, I, I believe and I, I hope that I give fair and balanced perspective on these things. I think it's really courageous to be so transparent because, you know, this is, I mean, it sounds like one of the hardest things you've had to deal with in life, you know, and then it, it although it's different, you're still reliving it, you know, you're still right. reliving it because there's the power in the story, you know, right. so I, I commend you, you know, for taking something that was very challenging, um, reliving it, but kind of remix it in a special way that not, not right. only encourages someone else, but it, it kind of right. continues to propel your healing through it, you know? Correct, correct, correct. So how long have you been hosting the Dating After Divorce Survival Guide podcast? I began it in November of 2019. So 
roughly, well, actually we're coming up on, oh, I'm sorry, it actually passed. My two year anniversary passed on the 4th of November. Eh, no, actually, sorry, let me correct myself. The, the anniversary was the 11th, Veterans Day. I actually dropped the first pra- the trailer on November 4th. So yeah, Veterans Day. So you've been at this for two years. I mean, you've recorded countless episodes. Do you have, tell me about it. Do you have guests on the podcast? Is it you, you know, speaking your gems? You know, right. what, 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 what do you, your listeners, um, what's in store for your listeners? Okay, so it, the format, it's a serial podcast, which is different from the episodic where you're just interviewing people like the, the way we're discussing things right now. So essentially what happened and I believe it all was intended to be. I had a whole lineup. I planned to be the thought leader and the host and the interviewee and so on and so forth. And literally half of my roster of guests bailed on me during the times that I was supposed to be recording for them. And I had already put it out into the universe that I was going to do this. So I said to myself, well, what am I going to do? And then something kind of came over my spirit and my best friend whispered in my ear. He said, look, why don't you just talk about what you went through and maybe even talk the way you talk to me, because I'm pretty animated when I tell stories and when I talk to my to my boys or whatever. So I kind of did that. I tried out the first episode. It sounded absolutely ridiculous to me. Um, you know, when I when I I recorded it, I edited it, and then I was sitting there listening to it, and I said, "This is insane! Like, no one's gonna listen to this. This is probably the the wildest thing I've ever done." And three days later, three or four hundred people had listened to it. So. I was said to myself, well, okay. And then I just started storytelling from that point forward. Now, I do have a couple bonus episodes where I do interview people, but for the most part, it's a serial where I'm just literally telling the story. And, and what is the story? The story is when I decide to get back out there. So that was roughly t- 2018. Get back out there, meaning try to date. Okay. Now, how we are, how's it going now in 2021? <laughs> <laughs> it's going all right. It's going all right. I think, yeah, I think um, it, for, for me personally, yes, it's going all right. I, I enjoy dating. I enjoy meeting people because I learn who I am. I learn how I am when I meet people. I think a lot of times people are afraid to get out there because they don't want to be hurt. You mentioned something about transparency and vulnerability. So I draw power by calling a thing a thing. So I don't, I, if I keep my story to myself, then it has power over me. The second that I tell it, you know, even if it makes me seem weak or corny or whatever, well, I'm no longer corny because I told the story, you know what I mean? Or at least that's the way I think about it in my mind. So, um, yeah. Well, you are not corny. You are brave. <laughs> um, <laughs> what misconceptions do you break down for your listeners about the topic of divorce? I know there's a, a very valuable message specifically for your male listeners. And what's that? Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that I went through when I was going through it, which is divorce, and then even the the moments that happened after, um, like the, the denouement, the after the crash and burn, is that you're going through it alone. And I, I, I try to, by being so transparent, I try to let people know that you're not alone. Now you are going through it by yourself, because your path is your path. But there are other people that are, have been through the same thing. And I try to exist as proof that you can come out on the other side with a smile, with a pep in your step, with, you know, brave and, and just, I don't want to say start over because starting over means that I go back to one and I'm not one, you know what I mean? But you can go off in a different direction than the path that you thought that you were on and thrive. And honestly, I think that that path might be the in, the intended path for you to begin with. It's unfortunate, you know, divorce is absolutely unfortunate, but sometimes, you know, these things happen and it doesn't have to be the end. It's just, it's a turning point. So you don't have to, you don't have to die. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay there. Right. And I think that's an excellent, sorry to cut you off. That's an excellent point to drive home that there's life after divorce, you know, there's right. value after the divorce, you know, right. um, and whether you're like you starting a podcast after or writing a book, which right. I hope you do write a book <laughs> or writing a book or starting a business or, or whatever is on the other side of your next chapter. You know, I think that you have done a fantastic job of just encouraging anyone who might be watching to, you know, live and thrive, um, you know, after 
should divorce come. Right. Um, now the pandemic has invited devastating loss in 2020 and even present day, but it's also weakened many relationships. What encouraging words do you have for anyone watching who may be considering divorce? Um, I think the, the, the thing that I would offer people is to make sure that every stone is, un, is left, no stone is left unturned. You know, try everything. Uh, that doesn't mean run around and beg. That doesn't mean to do what guys do, what I do. What, and what I mean by that, not to generalize, but, you know, when we start to see that the, the, the house is coming down, we start swinging for the fence right? We start doing major things, things that we've never done before. And, you know, that, that wife, that partner, whatever might be looking at you like, well, you ain't never did that before. Why are you, why are you trying now? You know what I mean? But not doing that because those are things where someone will say to you, well, you're just doing this to keep me. You're doing this to keep things exactly as they are. I think the way that you can see your way out of these situations is to have a frank and honest conversation with a person. Hey, this is how I feel. Ask, how do you feel? How can we get through this and be just be frank? I don't want to lose you. I don't want to, let's say you, not this, because it's very clear to make the distinction. Are you fighting for me or are you fighting for the marriage? Because if you're fighting for me, that's one thing. If you're fighting for a marriage, then that just means you're trying to stay comfortable. You know what I mean? Like so the idea of marriage, not necessarily. The idea of marriage. Thing. Yes. And that was one of the things that I had to come to grips with because that was posed at me a couple of times. You're not fighting for me. You're fighting for the marriage. Um, you're fighting for the family. And you definitely need to make a distinction between it. I think, do I think family and you know your marriage is worth fighting for? Sure. But your marriage is made up of you and that other person. And the two of you have to work together. You know, when people say it stops working, there is no it. There's you and the other person. So you have to either agree to work together or acknowledge that you're not working either period or together. So I think it's just having frank conversations and, and talking to one another and being honest about how you feel about yourself and that other person. Great tips. I mean, it sounds like communication would be the top priority at that point for anyone yeah. watching. And so I echo that, you know, if, if you were experiencing or considering divorce, like you said, don't give up. <laughs> right. um, what encouraging words do you have for anyone watching who may be ready to get back into the dating world after divorce? Um, so what I would offer is make sure there's a couple things. One, make sure you love yourself first, right? What a lot of people will do is they will look to others to fill the holes that are in their lives. And that's an unrealistic expectation. It's an unrealistic burden to put on someone else. Um, you know, you are living your life and you've had your experiences growing up, your traumas, your whatever. And outside of a therapist and your pastor and maybe your close knit group of friends, it's not a new person's responsibility to fix you. So fix yourself. Now, that doesn't mean fix yourself perfect. It doesn't mean, you know, show up perfect, but just start doing the work on you and know that know what work belongs to you and know what what is required of a relationship or a dating experience and then two um so love yourself I'd say date yourself meaning go out spend time doing things that you might want to do with someone else but be able to enjoy them by yourself because if you can enjoy experiences by yourself then all you're going to do is enrich someone else's experiences you know what I mean but if you can't go out if, if you're measuring the success of an evening, a visit to an art gallery, a concert or whatever, based on you meeting someone or, you know, making some sort of love con connection, you're going to be miserable because one, you're going to be miserable because if it doesn't happen, then you're going to say, oh, well, this was a waste of time. And then two, you weren't wasting your time. You were at a concert, you were spending time with friends, you were doing whatever, but you weren't paying attention to that because some man wasn't there or some woman wasn't there. So I would say, learn how to do work on you and learn and, you know, to, to work on your traumas and to be as whole of a person as possible and to, and learn how to enjoy life by yourself so you can enrich someone else's life. Awesome. Well, you have been incredibly valuable and given so much insight onto pathways um, following divorce. I mean, you really are offering a survival guide. Uh, so if anyone is interested in following your journey, listening to your podcast, or even seeking advice on how to live a rich and fulfilled life after divorce, what's the best way to connect with you? Okay, so you can follow the podcast at dating, the, the website for the podcast is datingafterdivorce.guide. That's G-U-I-D-E. So datingafterdivorce.guide. That's actually a website. 
Um, you can, but if you put in the name or if you put in my name, Eric Payne, or if you put in the dating after divorce survival guide, either, you know, Spotify, Apple podcast, whatever, it's going to pop up. And, uh, you know, social media is at this point, Instagram is probably the best way to see what's going on with me. So that's, uh, Eric L Payne, E-R-I-C-L-P-A-Y-N-E. <laughs>